Father, we adore you. We lift you above all names. The only one who is mighty. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for showing us mercy continually. We are grateful, Lord. Papa, accept our thanks today in the name of Jesus. I come against every contrary spirit. Every spirit that walketh against knowledge. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Let our eyes of understanding be enlightened. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. I give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may please sit down in the presence of God. Tonight I want to try to finish on uh, how to serve God. But I know that will be challenging, so I'll just go straight into it. There are nine points I want to mention, in addition to the ones we have mentioned before. We have the first week, we looked at five. And then last week, we looked at five. Today, we are trying to see nine. All things being equal. Number one. You must serve God with joy. Joy. Look at Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5. It says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. From my own observation, it appears to me that joy is the one that opens the presence of God unto man. I think there are centuries, there are uh, angels who are in charge in the presence of God. These people, these angels, are deaf to any other thing except joy and gladness. So when you come to God, joy is a prerequisite. As soon as sorrow, anger, malice, bitterness, and all the likes take possession of an individual, the presence of God will check out from that person. So you are giving an offering that is very painful and it was difficult for you to release. But God expects you to resolve all of that on your own before coming to offer it to him. It has to be done with joy. Otherwise, it will not be acceptable. In essence, any service you render unto God without joy is unacceptable to Him. And I think that's one of the reasons why most of our offerings and hours of compulsory services are unacceptable unto God. So what am I trying to say? Whatever assignment you are doing for God, you must do it with joy. With joy. With joy. So that you will be accepted. That's number one. Let me go to number two. 
I said I want to do now today. So let me keep going. Number two, you serve God in obedience. In obedience. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Or if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You know, God is, uh, is great. And his identity cannot change. Truly, he loves you. But you have to understand how to work with him. Because he is the authority. And his dominion is upon all heavens and the earth. His words are not optional. His cancer is law. So when you are working with him, you need to remember that all the time. Any, somebody who is that great is not someone to disobey. You must follow his instruction. I have disobeyed him a number of times. And I suffered terribly. Suffered terribly. There was a day I was driving out of uh, Ife on a journey. And the Lord said, Stop and buy fuel there. I said, Ah, uh-uh, I have fuel now. At least I have half tank. Why should I be wasting my time on fuel? Oluwa, we will buy it later. He said, Buy that fuel, yeah. I had, it was total petrol station in Ife. I passed the place. I was almost reaching the University of Ife gate. The Lord said, go back to that place and buy fuel. I said, uh-uh. Oh, there is fuel everywhere now. By the time I get to it there, I will get fuel. By the time I get to Iwo, I will get fuel. By the time I get to Oyo, I will get fuel. Let me go. And I disobeyed him. That was a terrible day in my life. Because I couldn't get fuel anywhere. Anywhere. In Edeo, in Iwo, in Oyo. I was just freeing the thing. And I was begging God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. You, you serve him in obedience. He is wiser. He knows tomorrow. He knows what is happening in your life now. So when he says something, don't argue with him. So, number two, serve God in obedience. Is there something God has spoken to you? Do it. Don't argue with God. He is wise. He knows tomorrow. He knows what you need. So serve him in obedience. Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. You see... That Jesus also learned obedience. He says, I'm being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself 
and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Obedience. Even Jesus learned obedience. How much less we, we must learn obedience. Sometimes God will come and wake you up in the night and say, pray. Don't be too tired. Pray. Because if you don't pray, you will cry. He will come to meet you and tell you, do this. It might be an offering that he's asking you to give. As soon as he has spoken to you, take an action immediately. Don't delay. Okay, so that's number two. Obedience. Serve God in obedience. Number three. Serve God orderly. Orderly. Ninue two. Serve God orderly. Let me read to you from Leviticus chapter 1, verse 7 to 12. Leviticus chapter 1, 7 to 12. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire, or in order on the fire. Then the priests... Aaron's sons shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. For he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire. A sweet aroma to the Lord. If his offering is of the flocks of the sheep or of the goats as a bond sacrifice, he shall bring a male without blemish. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord and the priest Aaron's sons shall sprinkle his blood all around on the altar and he shall cut it into its pieces with his head and his fat and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar now if you listen to that very well you will notice that God is orderly he does not accommodate disorderliness People who have associated with him over years have discovered this, that God is an orderly God. Even in worship, as we read just now, it is expected that things will be done in his way. And if not, the sacrifice will not be acceptable. That's very important. There's another story I like to read. First Kings chapter 18. From verse 30 to 33. And then 38. Let me read it. 30 to 33. First. First Kings. First Kings 18. 30 to 33. It said then Elijah. Said to all the people. Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with these stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar, 
large enough to hold two sears of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill your water pots with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Elijah understood that zeal without knowledge would always fail. Zeal, if you are just pursuing zeal without knowledge, there will be trouble. Therefore, he ensured that he maintained order in you know, he maintained order in the content and the arrangement of his sacrifice. No wonder God responded to him because he did it right. If he had done it disorderly, there's a possibility that that fire will not come down. He followed the order, the pattern that God laid down. Unfortunately, we do not care about order in the church today. We just do things the way we want. And we expect God to adjust the standard and accept our sacrifice. We assume that the end justifies the means. But God would always follow order. Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 5. It says, For this reason, I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Order. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 23 also. He said, But each one in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. God is an orderly God. He is not going to change his order for any reason. So we must follow God's order in all that we do as we serve him. How does he want this thing to be done? I have plenty of scriptures, but I think I should leave that alone. When God gives instruction, you better follow his instruction. We were doing a crusade in one town some years ago, one village. I carried the and we were, I was praying heavily about that crusade. And then God said to me, tell your people, nobody should eat anything there. They must not eat anything. So I called them. You know, we are not sleeping there. We go return every day, go return every day. So you don't have to eat. God said, don't eat anything. I told them. But uh, after we finished the crusade, some of my people were very terribly sick. <laughs> very sick. That they had to come me. I want to cool or crusade though. One cool or I said, Oluwa, what could that be? And the Lord said, go and ask them what happened. While we were going on the way, we got to a place, our vehicle broke down. And some of them enter into the forest. You know, 
People become restless. They are just walking around. Some of them walked into the forest and they came back. When God was now talking, they finally confessed that when they entered the forest that day, they saw cocoa. You know cocoa now? Cocoa pods. Cocoa, ni cocoa, cocoa is in another, in somebody's farm. And they went and started plucking it. And eating it. All of them. Nearly died. Thank God for mercy. That intervened. After plenty of prayers to preserve their lives. God is an orderly God. Don't joke with divine order. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 40 said, Let all things be done decently and in order. When a leader tells you something, put yourself under that instruction. That's number three today. Okay, let me go to number four. Serve God in sincerity. Tito, you know? Serve God in sincerity. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 14. Joshua 24 and verse 14. It says, now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. You have to make up your mind what you want. You want to serve God? Then serve him. Not that you'll be deceiving yourself, pretending as if you are doing something which you are not doing. We need to serve God with sincerity. Because God sees your heart. He knows what is there. So you cannot deceive him. Sincerity. People come to serve God, but without sincerity, in falsehood. Because falsehood is human is 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 in is full is in human circle today. But you are different. God expects you to be sincere. Because sincerity is the hallmark of a genuine Christian faith. So you must walk in sincerity. I don't want to read plenty of scriptures. I have a number of them there. You can read John 8, 44. John 8, 44. You can read 1 John 3, 6 to 10. 1 John 3, 6 to 10. And you can read Titus 2, verse 7. Number 5. Am I right? Number 5. We serve God with faith and boldness. With faith and boldness. So we, you can serve God, you should serve God in faith and in boldness. Because your God is a great God. He's not limited in any way. 
Faith is his language. No man can impress God without faith. As a matter of fact, anything outside of faith is abomination to God. So it is difficult to offer, offer a service unto God without uh, faith and, and think you will be accepted. No. Okay. Look at Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. He said, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. When you are walking with God, there's a dimension of boldness that comes upon you because you know that the God you are serving is a great God. And if you check all the people who serve God in the Bible, one of the things that God taught each one of them was faith. God taught Moses faith. He threw his rod on the ground and he became a snake. And God said, hold it by the tail. Not by the head. By the tail. Now that's a dangerous thing to do. But Because he had faith in God, he became ready for what God was doing in his life. What about David? David, after he was anointed, went into the forest. And the Bible said a lion came after the sheep. And God told him, go after him. Go after. So he pursued the lion. The lion turned to fight. And David grabbed him by the beard and slew him. That is faith. You need faith to walk with God. If you are going to serve God, you do it by faith. We were doing evangelism some times ago. And we arranged all of us into tutu a group of tutu and I dismissed the people oh yeah go oh yeah share one of the ladies came back and said her own partner said look oh, we have to be careful about this thing so how can we go and be doing evangelism? The devil can kill us. All. Said in a place the other time, the, the, there was a lady that got a cancer because she went on evangelism. She's selling fear, distributing fear. Fear. Why would you pick cancer when you are preaching the gospel? Are you saying that your God is so weak that he cannot protect you? Faith and boldness is important in service. Whatever you are doing for God, the righteous is as bold as a lion. Your God is a great God. There is no limit to his strength. He can protect you. He can preserve you. So when you serve God, serve him with faith and uh, boldness. Number six, Serve God prayerfully. Prayerfully. Ephesians chapter 6, 
verses 10 to 12. And then 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. And then 18 to 20. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against richer hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praying always. That's verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. When you, when you serve God, you must learn to pray. You must be talking to God as you are serving. Don't serve without, without a relationship with God. Prayer is very important. I doubt if there's any other thing as important as prayer to you as God's worker. That's the only means by which you communicate with the owner of the work. And his work cannot be done in isolation. You have to submit to him. He is the one that will use you. So you need to pray. The Bible said we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. That is Ephesians 2.10. We are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, how can you become your best? It is through prayers. If you learn to pray, your service will become excellent. God will begin to tell you what to do, how to do it, because prayer is like a compass to the believer. And you cannot go far without prayer. Ministers need to pray. Leaders need to pray. Ushers need to pray. Choristers need to pray. Every worker in church needs to pray. Me, I've cast out devil in one meeting before. And it landed in an usher. The usher was just, you know, sleeping, dozing off where he was. And the demon left that person and entered into him. Thank God that I was sensitive enough to know and deal with it. Prayer is very important. It has even happened to my daughter before, when my daughter was very small. I was ministering deliverance to a woman in the church. It took so long. And then finally, she was delivered. But as she fell on the floor, the Holy Spirit said, Your daughter at home. Your daughter at home. Your daughter at home. And instantly I understood. And there's no distance in the spiritual realm. So, prayerfully, I dealt with that problem. When I got home that night, 
My wife was telling me the experience she had. What my daughter did that day. I just smiled. Because I knew what was responsible for it. You must learn to pray as to serve God. Prayer is very, very important. Number seven, serve God in holiness. You must serve God in holiness. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The Lord is far from the wicked. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former laws as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also must be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. That's First Peter chapter 1, 14 to 17. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here, in fear. As he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. As you are working for God, you cannot live any careless life. God is holy and he cannot accommodate any form of filthiness. As his worker, you are his representative. You cannot represent him well unless you are holy like him. Most people serving God fail to understand this. Even some ministers, they don't understand that. They think they could impress God with hard work sacrifice and zeal. But all these are simply to rest on the foundation of holiness. Your life must be holy so that you can serve God. A young brother met me the other time and requested that I should I should pray some special prayer for him. So I asked him, what do you have on mind? He said, God told him that uh, it's time for him to begin to operate in the miraculous. And that he should come and meet me to lay hands on him so that he can begin to do it. So I said, he should kneel down. As I laid hands on him, the Holy Spirit stopped me. He said, ask him about fornication. So I asked him, Ogbeni, what about fornication? He was very shocked. But before he could answer, the Holy Spirit said, how many girls? So I asked him, how many girls? And he said, four. Four girls. They are all in his fellowship. Four sisters that he was having sex with. And they all attend the same fellowship. In fact, he is the president of the fellowship. If, I don't know how to put it, 
he's sleeping with four girls in the same fellowship. And none of them knows that he's sleeping with the other. Then you will notice that he's highly anointed in the morality. Highly anointed in the morality. And if I had not been warned by God, I would have uh, ratified this ministry of immorality. The Bible says the foundation of God stands stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. You can read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19 to 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19 to 26. There's a lot of immorality going on in the body of Christ today. And most of the people, they will even be arguing. They tell you, God, God understands. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 said, Let him who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Hmm? Anyhow, I think I should leave that one and go to another point. Serve God with wisdom. Serve God with wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get uh, understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. That's Proverbs chapter 4, 7 to 9. Proverbs 4, 7 to 9. Wisdom is very important in service. You need a lot of wisdom as you serve God. Uh, how do I put it now? Wisdom is very crucial. He said, Jesus said, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you, uh, be you, uh, be you, wise as uh, a serpent and uh, harmless as dove. You need wisdom to do everything you are going to do for God. You must not you know, you must not uh, expose yourself to the wicked because you are serving God. Jesus did not commit himself to people. He went away from them. Because he knows the heart of men. That they are desperately wicked. So when you are serving God also. You must walk in wisdom. Don't hand yourself over to men. Don't let men do what they like with you. Serve God with all your strength, uh, but don't expose yourself to the wicked. Meanwhile, don't expose yourself to the devil. You want to go and do evangelism, you, a girl, you are going to evangelism alone. No, that's not wise. 
Jesus, even Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, the Bible said he sent them two by two. Wisdom, that's wisdom. Don't hand over yourself to the wicked. Many people have been raped in the process of evangelism because they were foolish. So we must do it with wisdom. Okay. Number eight. Huh? Nine. Okay. Serve God consistently. Consistently. That's how to serve God. It's not enough that you serve God yesterday. It's not enough that you serve God last year. When you serve God, you must do it consistently. The Bible says we should not be weary in well-doing. And if we faint not, we shall receive our reward. It's a consistent thing. Whatever you are doing for God, keep on doing it. Keep on serving God. Uh, Don't say, I have served. I I have done enough. There was a time in this church, I'm the one that does everything. Now I, I have passed that level. You will have no reward. He who puts his hands to the plow and look back. The Bible said it's not fitting for the kingdom of God. You must continue to serve consistently. That's how to serve God. You serve yesterday, you serve today, you serve t- tomorrow, you serve every time. Every time. And then you will have your reward because you are not tired of serving. Some people, when they are serving God, God will promote them. And the moment they get promoted, maybe an open door for him to go abroad, to have a fantastic job, and then he thinks... He has uh, passed the level of service. God has promoted you. But then, you must continue to serve him. You must not be tired. I saw the president of one country. He went to a church. And uh, the service was going on. All of a sudden, president just jump up from his chair and went to the conga and started beating conga. Everybody was hailing him. He said, of course, this is what I used to do. And now I don't see them beating it well. So I want to a president. President Jimmy Carter of America. He was a Sunday school teacher in his church. When he became president, he took a leave of absence. That four years so I'm going to be president. I cannot be serving as a Sunday school teacher. But when I finish, I'm coming back. And as soon as his term finished, he resumed duty there as a Sunday school teacher. Not as pastor, as Sunday school teacher. Which he did until uh, he could not walk again. There's a time when you cannot walk. 
But when you can walk, walk. I told myself, I will use my strength to serve God. I will die in the process of serving God. Because God is the greatest person to serve. Don't wait until there is no strength in your body again. Labor for God now. Particularly you youths. You won't always be a youth. I wish I can be a youth again. But I cannot be again. That era has gone. I will serve him with all my strength. Did the Lord say that? Pray for grace to serve. I want to serve you, Lord. Enable me to serve. Can you pray that prayer? I want to serve you all the days of my life. Oh, <laughs> Lu,